Bonjour, salut tout le monde. Good morning to you from my little bit, my little part of France. Um, today is Mother's Day in France, and uh, I literally just rolled out of bed ten minutes ago. Um, about my last video on my visa experience, there was an important piece that was missing in the um, in the part of the video. I just found out that. You know some details were left out and i wanted to rectify that by coming on here this morning and i also want to share a little bit about finding a job in france um it seems like uh perhaps i'm giving the impression that uh, there are no jobs but i wanted to um share a little bit about my own experience as a student in france and as per um, finding a job guys so here i was again yabbing off <laughs> And the video was not even, I mean, the voice wasn't recording. So I'm going to re-record again. And I hope I remember remember what I left out. Um, the part that <laughs> got me seen was, um, um, so one of the documents I submitted for my visa application was the letter that came from the university stating that I had done uh, that I'm going to do a semester of language before um, coming in for the master degree. So the letter came from the university like that. That sorted the reason for my travel. The second document I submitted was my lease, renting the apartment lease. How I did it was, you know, after finding the apartment, because I was, you know, liaising with Campus France to ask them which accommodation I eventually found um a student a resident that was a private student resident that was willing to um uh rent their apartment out to me and send me the lease documents on the condition that i would pay three months in advance so i had to send money to them first before they sent me the documents before i signed scan and sent back to them and then they sent me confirmation everything i needed for the embassy that took care of accommodation then now proof of funds i have to submit bank statements I had to submit a proof of funds, everything possible, you know. If you're a student and then um, you can get someone who is, you know, okay, that's well, um, well, uh, that's willing to write a letter saying that they can accommodate, they can finance your studies, they're going to support you, and they're willing to, to give you their documents like a, a bank statement showing that they can do that, they are in the position to do that, then I think that can you know standing as a form of um finances for me i had to do all of that myself because i was going with three kids remember so i had to really show that i'm able to take care of myself and my kids then aside from that i submitted a cv you know showing uh, my experience teaching and you know they already had uh, my details in their system i really so it showed that i'd be going back and forth to france and uh, i don't know if it helped that i was a teacher but um so those are the documents I remember that I submitted, you know, beside the basic ones. Uh, I don't know if it helped that I also um, was a French teacher and, you know, I, I submitted my CV, you know, showing years of experience teaching and studies. I don't know if that helped, but that was what I submitted. So after I gathered all the documents together, I was liaising with Campus France throughout this time, writing to them to show that, oh, can I submit this? And they were correcting me. So when I physically went to Campus France, they gave me a letter. You know, it's like a kind of uh, official document saying that this person has fulfilled all the requirements and they are satisfied that this is a student going to study. You need that document when you are submitting your papers. And in my case, I went to the VFS center that in Abuja. That's where you submit your visa application. I would say that um, getting the documents together was, you know, just part of the challenge, which I was able to surmount. And then getting to the VSF center, I'm not bashing them or anything like that, but it was a terrible and saddening experience for me because I went there uh, because I had um, experience already uh, applying for visa, so I knew the documents are required. So when I got there with three kids, I actually uh, took a taxi there all the way to Abuja from Kaduna with three kids, had all my documents ready, sure that I was, you know, but I don't know what happened, but the agent that was at the counter that day was so mean and so nasty. 
I told them I was applying for a visa with three children. They're like, oh, you need the father's consent. I said, the father is late and here are the documents supporting that. I'm saying, even, the, even though you still need a document from the court um, uh, stating that the children you know, are legally allowed to leave the country. And I was like, my son, who was less than two years old, was sleeping. My daughter, who was about uh, nine years old, was there, the other one. And the guy was like, no, you, you have to go to the court and, you know, like, could I leave my kids and quickly take a cab to the court? They were like, no, you have to take all your kids. And that's how I had to go with the sleeping child. Went all the way to the court. I was lucky enough to meet a young lady who facilitated, got a letter, everything stamped and signed. That was the same day. And I went back to the VFS center. The guy, oh, so you made it back. That was what he said. And then he's like, no, if one document is missing, you're going to come back tomorrow to continue and I was like see I'm coming from I don't know anyone in Abuja I'm coming from far and I want to complete this today you can see that I've been going back and forth but the guy did not want to listen to my explanation he was like okay if any document is missing you're going to come back whether you like it or not you can always find somewhere uh, a colleague or someone to say like I don't know anybody here and he just kept on going to my papers oh sorry you can't there's nothing you can do about it you know, at that point, the uh, hot tears started coming down my cheek because I was tired, I was stressed. Uh, and, you know, something I thought I was going to be straightforward. And it's unfortunate, you know, really, that the most struggle I had was with Nigerian to Nigerian. You know, I've been, I've traveled quite a, you know, a little bit before then. So I knew that even when I go to the airport and, like, if you go for an airline like uh, KLM, they will be looking for uh, the woman who has kids first to check in before they check in other people. And I wasn't on any special flight economy, you know. So, you know, it really impressed me that people would treat, you know, women and children with, you know, that kind of regard. Not regard in the sense of, but regard that you know what it takes, that sense of, um, that sense of, uh, uh, hum you know, humane feeling that, oh, this is stressful traveling with children. So, we facilitate it for them first before single people or people without traveling without kids. But at the VFS center, the guy, I mean, it was just, it was just terrible. <laughs> My daughter saw me crying, standing in front of the counter, then she started crying too. And uh, the guy just turned away and went, and you know how it is. So I told him that I want to see your supervisor. I would like to discuss with him because I'm going to escalate this matter to the embassy. I don't see why I should come here with kids and doing everything I'm trying to, I'm doing everything possible. I'm not begging you for any special document. It's just a photocopy. Let me finish this and leave. And he's like, oh, do you want to report me to him? And things like that. At that point, I, mean, I had to call someone. I tried to make an angel of where we would stay that night. You know, took a taxi in the evening. And then there was traffic. And then we we're hearing that they were robbing in the traffic. And then, you know, it was a scary situation. I had to sleep somewhere that night with a friend un unexpectedly. In, with, you know, with the family, I had to go to them for them the situation. So the next morning, I went back and um, I spoke with um, the manager of the VFS center then, who apologized and asked me not to escalate the situation. But I had to express myself to him, and I just left. I was just grateful that um, I had options. I had a way out in t where to stay that night, and. You know, I was so angry with myself for not taking my own car. I actually have my own car. I could have gotten a driver, but because of security and ease and things like that. But when you have kids, don't do that. Please always go with your own vehicle. That was just my experience with the BFS center. That was the hardest, one of the, the you know, depressing parts of it. But all in all, that's my whole story about um, my own uh, visa application for my master's degree. And if you want any more details or information, please ask questions so I know what direction to talk about. Um, talking about jobs in France. Now, like I told you in the previous video, working in France, if you don't have the language, it's going to be really, really um, tough to get a job because if you don't speak the language already, there's that um, barrier. And it depends on, on how open-minded, you know, they are towards you. Um, you don't speak the language and you want to work, you know, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Now, take, bear in mind that when I came, I had kids, so it kind of slowed my, my search down. I couldn't go for it as hard as I wanted to. So first off, I started looking, immediately I came, I started looking for a job, any kind of job. I was ready to do cleaning, I was ready to do, um, you know, any kind of work just to have income coming in. 
I know, but to be honest, I never got any of them. I applied to McDonald's, I applied to so many places, you know, but it was just not working out. I had to do my CV over again, even at, while I was in classes and doing school runs and things like that, I was doing all of that. So I would say, to keep it short, the first chance that I actually got was um, a hostessing job, like, um, they called it hostessing, but to be honest, it was a medical convention and they needed guinea pigs not guinea pigs what i mean is someone to just lie down on the uh, medical bed and for them to use some machine to test you know not test but to uh, demonstrate what it could do it was a convention for medical doctors so i just what i did that day was well, that was the first chance i got at the you know a job was just uh, lay down on the medical bed the whole day the whole day and then they bring all these machines checking this checking that and then they're discussing the doctors are discussing over your head and i was just closing my eyes throughout the whole day i think i was paid about 80 euros for that one day then then another job experience i had was um uh, at the international short film festival it happens every year in this part of france and it's it it's it is the cans the way cans is for films this particular festival is the kinds of short films so it happens for about two weeks and lots of nationals from different countries come in uh, to show their films directors from canada korea uh, japan from uh, finland spain anyway you could think they all come there and there's also a film market so in the film market they have stands for different companies that work with uh, film industry professionals so i was you know, employed as a bilingual stand uh, accountant and stand manager, or oh, is it stand assistant? So all I did was just, um, you know, man, you know, the stand and then um, answer questions and queries based on people that were coming to the table asking, you know, during the festival and you know, all. That was my first real chance. And while I was there, the organizers of the festival noticed me that I was very um, proactive, I was very active, I was very lively. So I got talking to the organizers that, oh, I would really love to um, do my internship because I was still doing my master's degree, that I would love to do my, my internship here, that this has really opened my eyes. So luckily for me, the next year when they were doing the festival, they actually gave me the chance to intern with them before the festival, during the festival and after the festival. So that was another ex work experience I had, which it really opened my eyes and I and I was really grateful for the chance because I knew I knew that um, it's not really easy because I think they are more um, exposed to an international community. So, you know, they were willing to give me a chance. So that was my um, other experience I had. Then, aside from um, that particular job, I put up um, I put up a, an announcement for a English tutor. There are a lot of French people that want to learn English. And there's this site where people go to find really quick solutions and stuff. So I, I, I gave uh, English lessons, you know, physically to uh, some French um, some French, uh, French people, you know, teaching them English. One was a professional um, working in a company and needed to really upgrade their English. And uh, one, a couple of, two of them were students, you know, so I help them with English and, you know, you get paid um, in a month. You could have average like a hundred and for each lesson you can charge maybe like 10, 15, 20 euros, depending on how you want to make. So that's what I also did. So like um, with this video, I hope it helps a little bit. I talk about jobs. And I know I've left out quite a bit. So uh, let me know what you want to know about finding jobs in France. And with this, um, in, with this uh, impromptu video comes to an end, um, just keep the hope alive and keep pushing. And um, please reach out to me. You have all the details under my about page. You can book time, you know, if you need specific answers because, you know, your situ everybody's situation is different you know and um follow like share subscribe let's grow let's make a thousand if you can let it you know you can share with people that you think this video would be 
um, a help to them. So with this, I say, um, have a nice day and um, I hope your dreams come through. Peace out.